Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with My Hero Academia. Last time on My Hero Academia, we had My Hero, where, uh, continuing the attack on, uh, the, uh, the Pussycats training ground. That sounds weird when you say it like that, but whatever. Um, yeah, so, uh, Midoriya went to go find Koda, who was, uh, currently being attacked by a villain named Muscular, who... Uh, big shock, or big coincidence, honestly, uh, was actually the guy that killed, uh, Coda's parents. Luckily, Midoriya showed up and, uh, had to fight him. It was a pretty hard-fought battle, actually, uh, with Midoriya going back to some classic 100% smashes, uh, but also pulling out a 1 million percent Delaware Detroit smash, which was pretty awesome. Um, now, did he actually do, uh, one million percent? Well, I don't know about that, but, um, but he definitely gave it, his, gave it his all, and it's probably the most powerful, uh, smash he's done so far, which is pretty crazy. Um, and yeah, but we still have a lot to go through with this one, because that is, uh, one of, t uh, ten villains overall, so we've still got nine others. Uh, Bakugo and Todoroki were, uh, about to be in a conflict with the, the weird mask guy who looks like he cut a dude's hand off and wants to eat it. Uh, we have no idea where Ragdoll is. Uh, she could be dead. We don't know. Um, and, uh, oh, what's his name? Tetsu Tetsu. Uh, Tetsu Tetsu is also going to join the fight, uh, because he knows that that's why... Class 1A is so good, it's because they always join the fight. So he's going to join the fight too. Also, Aizawa has been burned, so... Yeah. This is where I say no spoilers in the comments whatsoever. And like always, if you want to watch my reaction to this episode of My Hero Academia, you're going to have to go down in the description or to the pinned comment. Click on the link there, it'll take you to the reaction. You can watch it, you can hopefully have a good time. When you're done with that, you can pop right back over here for the discussion. Oh god. Sorry. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into this episode of My Hero Academia. Here we go. Alrighty. That's episode five. Man, oh man. Oh, freaking Dark Shadow. He can't unleash Dark Shadow at all at night, you know? Uh, neither of them have the right quirk for it. So they encountered... What the fuck is his name? Let me see. It was about here. Moonfish. That was it. Death Row Convict escaped Moonfish. This this dude was on Death Row. Jeez. And his teeth, his quirk is that his teeth grow into these horrible monstrosity, these eldritch abominations. Jesus, that is terrifying. Ugh. Holy crap. So that's how Shoji got... He got a hand cut off. So I, I wonder, though, could he grow a new hand, though? So... Which means we don't... It's still not confirmed what happened to Ragdoll. They kind of implied last episode that perhaps Moonfish killed Ragdoll. But... I don't know. We do not know. Man, all right, so. Ah, oh, this shit is crazy, man. Crazy! Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right. We can go ahead and hop right into the notes on this one. The first thing I wrote down was pawns. In chess, the pawns go first. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was interesting. Uh, we kind of get insight into Shigaraki's uh, uh, mind, honestly, with that where um where it's basically like uh it, it, yeah he's basically sending in pawns to 
basically disturb the peace, you know? Make sure that the villain or the heroes are always on edge, basically, you know? He's always making sure... He, yeah, he's basically making sure that, you know, the heroes are always on edge, you know? Whereas before, you know, like he said, basically the USJ was, you know, fighting fighting the boss at level one, you know? Even if they had a great weapon, they were still at level one and they still ended up losing, you know? Whereas now he's taking more tactical approaches to it, uh, which is interesting. Um, and he even says, you know, even if their ideals are different, um, even if some of their ideals are different, then um, he, he can still use them, basically, which is interesting. Um, and one of that, one of that would be, uh, the Stain, the Stain fanboy, uh, spinner who looks exact, who dresses as Stain, you know, he dresses as Stain, he's got too many swords, um, so he, even though Shigaraki, so Shigaraki basically was like, hey, we're going after the students, we're trying to kill the students, not exactly the pro heroes this time, and, one of the people on the kill list is Midoriya, but one of the people on the kill list is Midoriya, but Spinner will spare Midoriya because Stain would spare Midoriya, which is interesting. So that could cause some problems, and you know that's what eventually got uh, Spinner and uh, fucking Ego Raptor knocked out. Dude looks exactly like fucking Ego Raptor, by the way. Like I keep looking at him, I was like, this is a motherfucker. Anyway, um, but yeah, it got the two of them knocked out because they were distracted long enough for uh, Mandalay and Tiger to knock them down. So, so yeah, that was interesting. Um, and you know, you have to you have to wonder like, okay, well, is there something specific they want from? Is there something specific they want from Bakugo, or is it just that he's on the kill list? You know. Um, I don't know. But now everyone knows that they're after Bakugo. So, now I wonder, like, let me, like, l let me listen back to that a little bit. Hmm. Interesting, uh, this guy also says only two people in our group fight with that kind of power, and he knows one of them is muscular, so, and he's like, oh, could Deku, could Midoriya be stronger than muscular? Um, I wonder who the other guy is, is it him? Because, I mean, this guy is, you know, fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tiger, but, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, I should go back to the beginning where um, Shigaraki was talking. Because he said something about, like, a villain needs... Not, not all villains need to be shaken or something like that, I don't remember. Yeah. They may have different goals than me, but they're comrades nonetheless. In a society bound by ridiculous rules, villains aren't the only ones who are being oppressed. Villains aren't the only ones who are being oppressed. And he's looking at a picture of Kachan.
is he trying to unleash Bakugo? Maybe unleashing Bakugo would lead to his downfall. Are they trying to recruit Bakugo? I don't know. Why do they want Bakugo? We have got to figure that out. Alright. Um, the fucking door keeps moving, sorry. Um, I wrote down twice. Twice. Uh, which is interesting. So, yeah. So, first off, Aizawa was completely fine. He dodged out of the way in time and then took the guy's quirk. Um, but that wasn't even him. That wasn't even Dobby. That was someone else, uh, which was interesting. Or, it, you know, it was a clone, basically. So, twice, this guy can make... He can make clones of... Um, of anyone, basically, which is pretty interesting. So that's why Dobby dissolved. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I wrote down combat. So, Aizawa has granted them all permission to... Uh, to fight back, basically. To injure the villains. Because, yeah, it is an issue that, you know... Even if the police show up, then, yeah, this is going to be... A bit of a problem, you know? With all these villains that were, you know, defeated. Um, but, you presumably they could still use the loophole of well so long as you know so long as no one gets the credit for it you know now maybe that was easier when it was just three kids you know uh midoriya todoroki and ida it was easier when it's like okay it's just three of them they don't talk and then um and then uh endeavor takes all the credit this time it's a little harder where you know there's only Six heroes among them uh, taking down those ten villains, you know. Um, and I don't, I don't know if they, you know, if any of them have like the prowess to, you know, you know, take credit for some of those injuries. You know, they said like, okay, like last time, it's like, well, you know, we could say Endeavor defeated Stain, and you know, his burns, you know, would uh, work with that story, but. This time, when you look at, like, muscular, it's like, well, how? How did that work? How did Deku get those injuries if he didn't fight? So, now, Aizawa has granted them all permission to fight back if they need to. And he's going to have to take the rap on that. I, I don't know. I'm kind of worried now. Like, what could that possibly mean, you know? Now, granted, the whole point of being here at this training ground is that uh, afterwards, they are supposed to get, like, provisional licenses and, you know, permits in order to be able to fight in a crisis. So, maybe, maybe they can loophole around that? I don't know, you know? So, yeah, but I was always going to take the rap on it when this is all over, so, which, it could be a few episodes before this actually ends. Um, yeah, Stain and Shigaraki also wrote that down, which we talked about that uh, some of them, at least Spinner, you know, will hold to Stain's principles. Um, whereas others, like um, Mag, Big big Sis Mag, uh, whatever, Ego Raptor, um, he, he's just trying to do what Shigaraki told him to, you know? Um, and then we had uh, the big fights where Tetsu Tetsu and Kendo uh, took on uh, Gas Mask, which was pretty cool. Um, I, I did like that fight, you know, uh, just with, just with how difficult it was for them, you know, uh, with Tetsu Tetsu losing his mask and then, uh, having to fight through that while also getting shot at. Um, and it's also interesting too, just cause that, that was a kid. That was just a straight up like kid, probably younger than anyone there other than I guess Coda technically. But yeah, it's like, this is just a kid and you know, he's you know, got a gun and shooting people and stuff. Um, but I did like the solution of, you know, Kendo, uh, using her fists, her big fist to, you know, wave away all the gas long enough and, dis uh, distracting, uh, distracting gas mask. I just assume that's his name. I'm probably not though. Uh, distracting him in order for, uh, Tetsu Tetsu to get in there with a, a solid hit, uh, to break the mask. So, that was pretty good. I did like that. Uh, and then the last thing I wrote down is Dark Shadow. Yeah, Dark Shadow is on the loose because he... Pretty much Dark Shadow instinctively came out. And now, you know, 
they have to deal with it because yeah, it's nighttime and dark shadow is unrelenting at night. So you got to do something about that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Another great episode overall. And I'm interested to see where we are headed next time. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty much it. With all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of my My Hero Academia reactions, you can click on the playlist, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media, links below in the description. See you guys later.